What's going on everyone? Welcome back to GEA Fan TV. I hope you're all keeping well. My name is Aaron and today we'll be looking at 10 clubs that you need to keep an eye on for this year's 2020 County Championships. Now first of all of course if you are new around here hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. i am getting a couple of new subscribers actually off the last video so I do really appreciate that and I appreciate a lot of the support I've been getting recently. Uh, it does motivate me a lot to continue with these videos and really continue the uh, the growth of the channel so I do uh, I do really appreciate that so sound for that but anyway let's jump straight into it 10 clubs that you need to keep an eye on in this year's county championship all right so we'll start with of course last year's all Ireland club winners or this year's all Ireland club winners as a matter of fact in earlier in January and that is Ballyhale Shamrocks and um, I mean they have been the dominant force on in the club scene for a couple of years now on hurling I mean we were speaking about Corofin in Gaelic football as the dominant force in Gaelic football in terms of uh, club football and uh, Ballyhale Shamrocks in terms of hurling definitely get that honour. I mean, they were all Ireland club champions as we said before earlier in the year. They also won it in 2019 and they've actually won the all Ireland club championship four times in the past 10 years. And obviously that means that they are the dominant force in the Kilkenny hurling championship and certainly they're going to be worth a watch for this year's county championship also in 2018 and in 2019 they won the leinster championship as well so they've also been very dominant in uh, leinster hurling of course as well i mean there's just legendary status all over this club i mean you have a manager in henry shefflin who in my opinion could very well be a future kilkenny manager i actually think when brian cody decides to step down um, i think henry shefflin will be the man to replace him i think for one of the main reasons is when you look at ballyhell shamrock's success at club level i think it definitely you know paves a way for a legend like henry shefflin to take over from brian cody whenever that time comes of course of course they're led by their captain michael fenley very experienced and then of course you've got one of the best hurlers in the game at the moment in tj reed who has been the driving force of this ballyhell side for a number of years and you know when you look through what he's actually scored in the past couple of years i mean he scored 253 in five games last year from the Leinster Championship all the way through to that All-Ireland Club Final. And they just have talented players all around. Very talented inter-county stars, very talented future stars. Owen Cody, for example, he scored three goals and 10 points last year. Colin Fenley, uh, four goals and two points. So they are certainly a side that needs to that we need to watch. TJ Reid, as a matter of fact, actually scored 214 in one game against St. Martins in the Leinster Club Championship. So, I mean, for Ballyhale, I'm sure they would have had their focus on the Leinster Club Championship and obviously winning another All-Ireland. This will serve as big preparation for Kilkenny going into the, uh, you know, Leinster Hurling Championship. So, I'll be very intrigued to see how Ballyhale go on. They actually start their campaign against Rower in Stoga. Uh, hopefully I said them right. I, I might butcher some names along the way here, but hopefully I've got that one right. But Ballyhale, certainly nonetheless, I will be keeping my eyes closely on them in this year's Kilkenny County Championship. All right, and next up we have Boris Lee. Now, Boris Lee, of course, were actually beaten by Ballyhale Shamrocks in that All-Ireland Club Hurling Final that we were speaking about earlier in the year. And they sort of broke out on, broke on the scene out of nowhere really last year in Tipperary. Very impressive side and they have a lot of very talented young players in that team. As I said before, finalists in the 2020 All-Ireland Club Championship, a massive achievement. And, you know, what they achieved last year I think will go down in the history books as a famous year for this club. They won their first county championship in 33 years when they won it last year in 2019. And obviously it was, their sa it was the same for their Munster title, so uh, that it was their first Munster title in 33 years as well. I mean, they're very much guided by a couple of veteran players like Brendan Marr, for example, who's been at the club since 2005, Dan McCormick, Connor Kenny. Of course, Brendan Marr has been significant in some of Tipperary's All-Ireland hurling success, and he's played a critical role in Boris Lee in getting them to their first county title and obviously going the whole way to an All-Ireland club final as well. They actually have a lot of great young players coming through as well. James J.D. Devaney, for example, uh, has really caught the eye. Kyle Maher, of course, as well. Both are actually still at under 20 level for Tipperary. And as a matter of fact, uh, James J.D. Devaney, of course, is being tipped as one of the future stars for Tipperary. He was 
only 18 when he actually played in the uh, All Ireland Club final earlier in the year. And he actually scored 1 4 in their county final as well. So, certainly, very talented player. I uh, remember the goal he scored in the county final as well. One of the goals of the year, if you haven't seen it. We could now be looking at the dominant force in Tipperary hurling. And with the rise of Tipperary, of course, winning an All Ireland last year, and of course, um, you know, really starting to produce a lot of very talented hurlers down there. You know, this could be a side that could potentially rival Ballyhale in the coming years. And certainly this year, they will want to prove their dominance as the dominant force in Tipperary. So nonetheless, we will certainly be keeping an eye on them. And next up, we move to the only Dublin club on this list, and that is Kula. Now, we could have spoke with a couple of different clubs from Dublin, such as Ballybolton St. Enders or Kilmacud Croaks, but certainly Kula have been the dominant force in Dublin in the past couple of years. The South Dublin club have have been outstanding in uh, in terms of hurling and in terms of what they have achieved and they have fallen off the boil in the past couple of years in terms of uh, you know winning Leinster club titles or competing at All-Ireland level but certainly in Dublin they have been dominant I mean they've won four of the last five county titles they are the reigning champions of Dublin as well they were Leinster champions in 2016 and in 2017 they're also All-Ireland champions in those same seasons as well so 2017 and 2018 you know you look at some of the players they have they actually have a lot of dual stars in their team I mean Con O'Callaghan we all know about him from Gaelic football he's also a very talented hurler as well his brother Keen O'Callaghan is actually very talented as well and um, he's had a very good couple of years for Kula Michael Fitzsimons of course another dual star he's been on the scene for Dublin for quite a long time played a significant role in fact in getting Dublin to their first ever All Ireland title in Gaelic football, and look, listen, I'm sure for Kula they will have, they would have had their eyes on the you know Leinster club title and All Ireland club title, but certainly they will want to continue their dominance at hurling level and of course at a Dublin Championship level. So certainly I'll be keeping my eyes on them. Their actual first game is actually against Nifion Barra this weekend, so it'll be very interesting to see how they get on there. But certainly Kula, one of the ones to watch in 2020 and staying on the topic of Leinster next up we have St Mullins Carlo's most successful club in terms of hurling alongside Mount Leinster Rangers St Mullins have uh, you know really started to rise in the past couple of years they have been you know part of the success story for Carlo in terms of their uh, rise in hurling. I mean, look, listen, we can't discredit Mount Leinster Rangers either. I mean, they will be on the honorable mention section, but I think St. Mullins have a very talented side and could start to knock on the door for the next couple of years. Um, they were runners up to Ballyhale in the 2019 Leinster Club Final. They actually beat the likes of Kula and Radowney Errol along the way as well. And I mean, Marty Kavanagh, of course, he's an inter-county star for Carlo. I've said it before, you could put Marty Kavanagh in a Tipperary or in a Waterford or maybe even a Kilkenny and he could easily win Hurler of the Year. He is that good. He scored 131 in three games in the Leinster Club Championship, which really shows his dominance for St. Mullins, of course. And... I mean, look, listen, I don't want to say they're a one-man team or anything like that, but certainly the influence of Marty Kavanaugh will be critical to their success this year in the Carlow County Championship. And next up, we have Slot Neal. Now, of course, Derry is more well-known for its Gaelic football and certainly is a known for producing good hurling teams down the years. But Slot Neal have been very impressive in the past couple of years. And of course, they actually gave a really good game to Ballyhale Shamrocks in the All-Ireland Club semi-final last year or earlier in the year as well. So if you look through what they have achieved, I mean, seven Derry County Championships in a row, you would expect them to make it eight in a row this year. And of course, in the past four years, they have started to become now the dominant force in uh, Ulster hurling. So they've won three Ulster titles in the last four years. And in fact, their first ever title was actually in 2016. They also, of course, were the first Derry team to ever win an Ulster Club title, which I think is very impressive. It shows kind of how hurling is on the rise in Derry. I made a video kind of a couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago speaking about some counties on the rise in hurling and maybe Derry should be on that list as well. Um, I suppose the only kind of thing is they do have a lot of dual stars kind of similar to Kula in Dublin. Chrissy McCaig, Shane McGuigan, Cormac O'Doherty in there as well. Cormac Doherty, of course, one of the young players, he actually scored nine points versus Bally Hale in the semi-finals. He would be the pick of the bunch for this team and massive credit has to go to Slot Neal and what they have achieved in the past couple of years. I mean, look, listen, they would have had their eyes most certainly 
on the Ulster club title and of course on the All-Ireland club title as well or at least getting to a final but they will want to continue their dominance of course in Derry as a matter of fact and I would certainly have them down as favourites to win the Derry Hurling County Championship. And then of course we move across to the West and of course down in the West there's only really one county that is significant in hurling and that is Galway. The most dominant team in Galway in the past couple of years has been St. Thomas. So they've actually won four county championships in the past decade and their one in 2012 was their first ever. So a massive achievement of course that was for St. Thomas. They were also All-Ireland champions in 2013. I mean look listen they're always going to be there or thereabouts you know obviously because Galway is the only uh, county that really plays hurling at a senior level. St. Thomas have had an automatic bypass through to the all Ireland club scene. They don't need to worry about a provincial title, but they've done very well. You know, they've always been knocking on the door. They've always been very close. You look at some of the players that they have produced down the years, of course, their captain, David Burke has been uh, exceptional down the years for Galway. Very talented hurler. Of course, his brother, Aina Burke, as well. He's looked quite good as well. Both actually made the difference when they came from behind against Liam Mellows when they won the 2019 county title. So they also have experience in there, like Connor Cooney and James Regan, who, of course, have been doing it for years with Galway. So very experienced team, mixed in with a bit of youth in there as well and uh, certainly they'll be a side that I think everyone will watch quite closely in the Galway Hurling Championship this year. And next up we have Patrick's Well of Limerick. Um, now obviously Limerick in the past couple of years have really started to break on the scene in terms of winning major titles at inter-county level. Obviously they were All-Ireland champions in 2018, Munster champions last year, and I'm sure they'll be there or thereabouts in 2020 as well. And obviously that has meant the rise of some club sides as well, and most notably Patrick's Well. They were 2019 and 2016 county champions. And you know one of the reasons why I've picked Patrick's Well out is because I believe we could be looking at maybe a side that further down the line could easily win Munster club titles and be competing at quite a high level at All-Ireland club level as well. I mean, you look at some of the players they have, Aaron Galan, Keen Lynch, two players who've broke on the scene in the past couple of years for Limerick. They also have the experience of Paddy Marr and Tom Nolan as well. I'm sure they will have their eyes on uh, All-Ireland hurling in 2021 whenever the All-Ireland club championship does resume. But certainly, it'll be a team to keep quite a close eye on with a lot of the young players they are producing. They certainly are in a tough group, however, for the Limerick hurling county championship. Championship. They are paired with the 2018 finalists in Dune and they're also paired with Adair as well. So it's going to be close, it's going to be tough for them. Obviously they will be keeping a close eye on the Piercing as well who are generally have generally been the dominant force in Limerick hurling but certainly for Patrick's well they will be looking to make it two in a row and it'll be very interesting to see if they can achieve it. And then next up of course we have Ballygunner of Waterford. They are looking to make it seven county titles in a row. Um, they were actually the favourites going into the Munster Club final last year, but of course lost to Boris Lee, as we were saying. And um, of course they were 2018 Munster champions. They've been probably the dominant force in the past three or four years in terms of uh, Munster Club hurling. I mean, the Waterford Championship is always competitive as ever. I mean, you have De La Salle in there. Abbey side and Passage have always been very competitive teams. But, I mean, Ballygunner will certainly be looking to continue their dominance of the Waterford County Championship. I'm sure, like a lot of teams, they would have had their eye on retaining their Munster Club title, or winning it back, I should say. But, look, listen, some of their most talented players, I mean, they have a lot of experience in there. Very experienced centre-forward in Porrick O'Mahony. Peter Hogan, as well, has been around for quite a while. You've got a goalkeeper in Stephen O'Keefe. Very talented keeper for Waterford. And, of course, they'll be relying quite heavily on the link-up play from their midfield and in in particular Shane O'Sullivan so they actually are paired up with Passage and Tallow in Group A so I'll be keeping a close eye on them but Ballygunner certainly will be one of the teams to watch in 2020 and next up of course we stay down in Munster and very close of course the Waterford is Cork I mean look listen we could have looked at the divisional side and Emo Killy who have won three county championships in a row but I did want to put a particular focus on Glen Rovers because I feel like they have such a talented side that it'll be very interesting to see that can they get back on top in terms of cork hurling they actually haven't won a county title since 2016 that was the last time they won it i mean when you look through some of the players that they've got i mean they've obviously got one of the best hurlers in the game at the moment in patrick horgan interestingly enough patrick horgan has actually been their top scorer 
every year since 2007, which is extraordinary. He scored 43 points last year in their uh, county championship. I mean, they do have a lot of experience in there as well. Dean Brosnan, talented left wing forward, of course. Stephen McDonald, who uh, very talented left cornerback, always providing the cover in the fence as well. I mean, they're not a one-man team. I mean, we were speaking about Marty Kavanagh and say Mullins earlier being a one-man team and maybe you could play the same card here with Glenn Rovers and Patrick Horgan but I think they still have a lot of experience in there probably need to blend through a bit more youth in the coming years to really try and overcome Imo Killy but certainly Glenn Rovers I'll be keeping quite a close eye on them in particular Patrick Horgan who of course will be one of the standout players for Cork whenever the championship does resume I'm sure okay and last but not least we have St. Martins of Wexford now now, St. Martins have actually only won four county titles in their time, but they have actually won two of them in the last three years. So certainly St. Martins have come out of the blue really in Wexford hurling in the past couple of years. And when you think of the rise of Wexford in the past year or so, certainly there'll be a team to keep a close eye on. They are starting to take over as the dominant force in Wexford hurling. Of course, Ular de Bala have been the significant force in Wexford in the past couple of years. But certainly St. Martins have started now to dominate and obviously they have experienced players in there like Rory O'Connor and Kieran Ling for example but they will also be relying on some of the kind of younger players in the side in particular their left wing forward Jack O'Connor who was very impressive last year when they did of course go on to win the Wexford County Championship when they beat St. Anne's in the final. So by the time that this video is going out St. Martins will probably be already be in action in a couple of hours. So their first game is against their rivals, Ular de Bala, which we were just talking about before. Hopefully I did get their name right. Look, listen, I mean, I'll certainly be watching that. That's probably the game of the weekend. Two of the dominant forces in Wexford hurling meeting in the first game. I'll be very interested to see how that goes, but certainly St. Martins of Wexford will be a close team to watch and I'll be very intrigued to see how they get on in 2020. All right, of course, now we'll look at some honorable mentions, of course, and I mean, there was definitely a few in there that a lot of you lads suggested, and I mean, we have Gary Spillane in there, of course, the Lockhale Shamrocks of Antrim, who were the dominant force, of course, at Ulster level before the rise of Slot Neil. You have Nip Piercing in there, who, of course, were winning uh, county championships quite often before the rise of Patrick Swell. Imo Killy, as we said before, three, straight county championships in a row in Cork, but of course they are a divisional side. Bally Bowden, St. Enders, I mean, we spoke about them in the last video, of course, when we were looking at 10 clubs to watch in Gaelic football. They were actually hurling county champions in 2018 as well. Naveena, another side from Wexford, knocking on the door, Mount St. Rangers of Carlo. We're talking about St. Mullins. I mean, we can't uh, discount St. Rangers either. They have been there or thereabouts every year. And I think they were actually Leinster club champions at some stage in the last decade as well. Kilmacud Croaks, probably should have mentioned them a bit in my football video as well, but certainly in hurling, they've been there or thereabouts. Very good club in terms of producing players off both hurling and football. So anyway, lads, that's gonna be the end of the video. If you have enjoyed, do leave a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if there's any clubs I have missed out, of course. Of course, lads, I will be covering the club championship quite extensively on this channel. So do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Aaron and I'll see you later.